We're going to be looking at the differentiation of exponential functions. So at this stage, you should be familiar with what exponential function is, a function of the form y equal to a to the power x, and the special case of e to the power x. And we're going to see today why e is so special, why it had to get its own name. So these are the graphs of the functions of y equal to a to the power x. Before we look at the differentiation, you should also be familiar with the product and chain rule for differentiation. So let's jump straight into it. The derivative of e to the power x, our favorite derivative, is again e to the power x. Now that's very nice because it's not complicated to differentiate. But what's interesting about that is if I look at the expert graph of e to the power x, what this means is for anywhere on this graph, the gradient of the tangent line is equal to the y value. So if x is equal to 1, my y value is e to the power 1, and that's also the gradient of the tangent line. If x is equal to 0, my y value is 1, or e to the 0, and that's also the gradient of the tangent line, and so on and so on. So I can basically just read off the value of the gradient of the tangent line, looking at my y values. Now, a little bit more complex is if we look at the derivative of a to the power x. Now, at the end of this playlist, I will show why the derivative of e to the power x is e to the power x. So we will use the definition of the derivative to show that, but I will use e to the power x to show you why the derivative of a to the power x is a to the power x ln a. So that one I will show you here, because that's quite nice and easy to look at. If you look at the bottom right, we're looking at some properties of exponential functions of a, or of exponents. So I can write a to the power x as e to the power x ln a. So if I want to find the derivative of a to the power x, it's the same as finding the derivative of e to the power x ln a. Because a to the power x can be rewritten as e to the power x ln a. Now the derivative of e to the power of function. Now I know the derivative of e to the power x is just e to the power x. Now the chain rule tells me if that's a function of x, the derivative of e to the power of function of x will then be equal to e to the power of that function times the derivative of the function. That's the chain rule. So if I've got the derivative of e to the power x ln a, that's just e to the power x ln a times the derivative of x ln a. Now ln a is a constant, so it's x times a constant. The derivative of that is just ln a. So we've got e to the power x ln a, which is just a to the power x ln a. So that's where the second derivative comes from. So in general, the derivative of a to the power x is a to the power x ln a. And like I said, I will show you at the end of this playlist, using the definition of the derivative, why the derivative of e to the power x is e to the power x. So let's use this deriv these derivatives. First one, y equal to 4 to the power 3x squared plus 5x. So we can already see we've got two functions going on here, 4 to the power something, and then that exponent, which is 3x squared plus 5x. So the derivative of a to the power x, we know. The derivative of a to the power x is a to the power x ln a. So here we go. Now we're going to use the chain rule. So the derivative of 4 to the power of function is 4 to the power of that function times ln 4 because that's the base, the value of a, times the derivative of the function. And remember to put it in brackets because it's more than one term, 6x plus 5. So that's using the chain rule, the derivative of 4 to the power of function. Now what about e to the power of function? Well, this one I just want you to notice that I've actually got three functions going here. e to the power of something, the root of something, and 2x minus 3. So there's three things happening, so we're going to use that chain rule twice. So let's take a look. dy dx. Derivative of e to the power of function is just e to the power of function times the derivative of that function. What is the derivative of that function? Well, the derivative of a root is 1 over 2 times the root times the derivative of the function inside, which in this case is 2. Now you can simplify that a little bit. That's e to the power root 2x minus 3 times 1 over the root of 2x minus 3. Right, the last one, we've got e to the power minus x times root x. So here we have the product rule. So that's the first thing you need to look at is the product rule. So the derivative is the first one 
times the derivative of the second one plus the derivative of the first one. So now we've just got to stop the derivative of e to the power minus x. What would that be? Well, it's e to the power of function. So that derivative is e to the power of function times the derivative of the function. What is the derivative of minus x? It's minus 1. And I'm still busy with a product rule, so the derivative of the first part times the second part. Now that one you can also tidy up a bit. That's e to the power minus x times 1 over 2 root x minus e to the minus x times root x. You can even take out e to the minus x as a common factor. You've got 1 over 2 root x minus root x. And you can make simplify that or factorize it even more by making everything in the bracket one term, but we're not too worried about that at the moment. Just want to make sure you can use these two definitions of derivatives that we've got for exponential functions together with the chain rule and the product rule. We didn't look at a quotient rule example, but they all get, come together in the end. So that is the differentiation of exponential functions.